In this video and the next, we're going to begin digging into the thermodynamics, the thermochemistry of bond formation and cleavage, understanding some key energy and enthalpy values that are used to appreciate how strong a bond is by quantifying how much energy is required to break that bond. We've encountered some of these ideas before, actually, in discussions of lattice energy. In this particular video, we're going to focus in on covalent bonds and the idea of bond dissociation energy. We'll define bond dissociation energy, or BDE, and then we'll see how BDEs can be used in conjunction with Hess's law to calculate reaction enthalpies, an alternative to using enthalpies of formation that comes with a couple of caveats. So to begin, let's introduce the concept of bond dissociation energy. Bond dissociation energy is the energy required to separate the atoms in a bond in the gas phase. So a chemical equation for the process is shown here. X and Y are bonded in the reactant molecule and are separated, separate gaseous atoms, on the product side. The enthalpy change associated with this, which is called the BDE or DXY, the dissociation energy for the XY bond is known as the bond dissociation energy, and it is the enthalpy change for this process. Now, bond dissociation energy is positive because bond cleavage is endothermic. We've seen this previously. And one important thing to appreciate about covalent bond dissociation energies is that they are an average for that bond in many different molecules. If we think, for example, about a carbon-carbon bond or a carbon-hydrogen bond, these types of covalent bonds show up in a huge variety of molecules, and the other atoms in the molecule do have an influence on the strength of the carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bond, and the same is true of any covalent bond. So the numbers that you'll see tabulated in tables where a single number is given, for example, for an OO or a CH or an NO bond, Let's appreciate that these are averages over those bond energies, bond association energies for many molecules. And this is going to cause small differences in the values of reaction enthalpies that we calculate, for example, using BDEs versus using enthalpies of formation, which one could argue are going to be more accurate in general. But this is really a caveat that we'll, we'll see in more detail a little bit later. For the time being, I want to focus on the bond dissociation energy definition here of it's an endothermic enthalpy value for cleavage of the bond in the gas phase. And for example, for the hydrogen molecule, the BDE is 436 kilojoules, a value that we've seen previously as a measure of the bond energy for the HH bond. Now, in general, a higher BDE is associated with a stronger bond, and this tends to be correlated with bond order, particularly for the same types of bonded atoms. Triple bonds are going to be stronger than double bonds, which are going to be stronger than single bonds in turn. So the BDE is correlated with the bond order is one way to think about this, with a bond order of three having a higher BDE than a bond order of one. And generally speaking, more polar bonds are stronger than less polar bonds. And the reason for this is a little bit complicated, but I like to think about it as boiling down to ionic character being built into the bonds. There's some element of electrostatic attraction between the atoms with opposite partial charges coming in as the bond increases in polarity. So for example, in the CF bond, we've got a formally positive carbon atom We've got a partially positive carbon atom linked to a partially negative fluorine, and there's a small amount of ionic character there that induces electrostatic attraction, strengthens the bond. We can envision any chemical reaction as a series of bond cleavages and bond formations, and this is a distinct way of thinking about reactions from the enthalpies of formation idea, because we're thinking about breaking all of the bonds and then reforming only the bonds that are formed in the products. And very often we'll break a bond and then reform it, thinking in this, in this rigorous way. So we only really need to think about where bonds are broken and made in a net sense as the reaction occurs. Given that we can think of any reaction as a series of bond cleavages and bond formations, we can think of the enthalpy change of the reaction as the enthalpy of all of those bond cleavages plus the enthalpy of all of those bond formations. So take the hypothetical example shown here, where there are four atoms involved in a reaction. Let's say they start in one molecule and they end up in two molecules in a different bonding pattern. One way we can think about this reaction occurring is to break 
all of the bonds. This gets us sort of a soup of the separated atoms, and there's some enthalpy input, some positive enthalpy associated with that. And then we form the bonds, or make the bonds, that are found in the products, and there's some negative enthalpy associated with that since bonds are forming. So we've got an endothermic contribution to the delta H of reaction from breaking all of the bonds, and an exothermic contribution to the reaction enthalpy from making the bonds found in the products. And so this equation is similar in spirit to the products minus reactants equation that we saw in the enthalpies of formation video and discussions of enthalpies of formation. The difference is we're using bond dissociation enthalpies and focusing only on the bonds broken in the reactants and made in the products. And the bonds broken contribute positive enthalpy. The bonds made contribute negative enthalpy. BDEs are typically reported as positive numbers, so we'll write the equation as we so we write the equa so we write the equation as we do here with positive enthalpy, positive D sub I for the bonds broken, and negative enthalpy, negative D sub J for the bonds made. Let's work a practice problem now where we apply this idea of using bond dissociation energies to calculate a reaction enthalpy. So the idea is to use the bond energies given here to calculate the approximate enthalpy change for this reaction. CO gas plus 2H2 gas goes to CH3OH, which is methanol. So we've got carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen gas to form methanol. Now the first thing we want to do here is lay down Lewis structures for all the reactants and all of the products. This makes it much, much easier to see which bonds are made and broken, and it's really a required step. So here are Lewis structures for the reactants, CO and H2, and we're going to keep in mind we've got two of those H2s around. It's probably a good idea to draw two HH molecules like this. And on the product side, we have CH3OH, whose Lewis structure is shown here. Now we look at the reactants and identify the bonds that are broken. What bonds are present in the reactants that are missing from the products? We see we've got two of the three bonds between carbon and oxygen are broken. We do want to account for that, realizing that a triple bond, a CO triple bond, is becoming a CO single bond. And we see that both of the HH bonds in the two HH molecules are broken. So we've got three bonds broken, one HH, another HH, and the carbon-oxygen triple bond. And we can think about breaking this completely and then reforming the CO single bond as the net process going on between carbon and oxygen there. So now we turn our attention to the bonds made in the products. This carbon has no bonds to hydrogen in the reactants, and it has picked up three bonds to hydrogen, so we've got three CH bonds made. There's no OH bond in the reactants, and we have an OH bond made in the products. And we want to think about that CO single bond being made if we're going to think about the entire CO triple bond being broken, which is generally how you want to do this because you'll have the bond energy for the CO triple bond in a table somewhere. So again, the bonds made, three CH bonds, an OH, and a CO. Now we apply the equation on the previous slide. We sum over the bonds broken, list their BDEs as positive numbers, and then we sum over the bonds made, listing their BDEs as negative numbers or inside brackets with a negative sign out front. So for the bonds broken, we have two HH bonds broken. There is the bond association energy of the HH bond. And we have the CO triple bond broken, and that actually wasn't tabulated here, but it should have been. That is 1,080 kilojoules for the CO triple bond there. Among the bonds made, well, we're going to throw a negative sign out front, put everything in brackets to make all these numbers negative. Three CH bonds with a BDE of 415 kilojoules each, 464 kilojoules for the OH bond, and 350 kilojoules for the CO single bond, which again was not tabulated here, but should have been. So we plug all of these numbers in, do all the multiplication, do all of the care with signs, so on and so forth, and we arrive at an overall change in enthalpy of negative 107 kilojoules. And the last thing I'll mention here is to caution you that this number will differ slightly from the value obtained if you use enthalpies of formation of methanol gas, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide because these bond dissociation energies that we're plugging into this equation are averages of the BDEs for the various types of bonds in many different molecules.